This is T. West. Welcome to Afro Synergy, news and information on Africa and the African diaspora. Analysis of Egypt demands Ethiopia halt Nile Dam upping stakes. The following is based on an article entitled Egypt demands Ethiopia halt Nile Dam upping stakes. Egypt will demand Ethiopia stop building a dam on one of the main tributaries of the Nile, a senior government aide said on Wednesday, ramping up a confrontation over the project that Egypt fears will affect its main source of water. Ethiopia set off alarm bells in Cairo last week when it began diverting a stretch of the river to make way for the $4.7 billion hydroelectric plant. Countries that share the river have argued over the use of its waters for decades, and analysts have repeatedly warned that the disputes could eventually boil over into war. The high stakes involved were underlined on Monday when senior Egyptian politicians were caught on camera advising President Mohamed Mursi to take hostile action to stop the project, and one went as far as suggesting Cairo destroy the dam. Now, of course, it does not get too much more hostile than that, than one nation saying that we're going to blow up your dam. We're going to destroy your dam. Now, the world is questioning why these people are so violent and so destructive. They have been destroying things in many nations and oftentimes doing it on behalf of members of NATO, such as the United States, France, and Britain. Egypt, which has been involved in years of troubled diplomacy with Ethiopia and other upstream countries, said Ethiopia must now halt work on the dam. Demanding that Ethiopia stop construction of the dam it plans to build on the Blue Nile will be our first step, said Pakinam El Sharkawe, the presidential aide for political affairs in comments carried on the state news agency MENA. The national committee that will be formed to deal with this issue will determine the steps that Egypt has to take. Senior Egyptian politicians called in to discuss the crisis with Mercy on Monday were apparently unaware their meeting was being broadcast on live television. The leader of Egypt's GAD party, Ayman Noor, suggested spreading false reports that Egypt was building up its air power. We can leak news information claiming that Egypt plans to buy advanced aircraft to increase its aerial presence, etc. Well, now it's very obvious that the phony propaganda just isn't going to fly. To put pressure, even if not realistic, on diplomatic discourse. Yunus Makyun, leader of the Salafi Islamist al Nur party, was filmed saying Egypt should back rebels in Ethiopia or, as a last resort, destroy the dam. And this is a clear indication from members of the Egyptian government that what some of them would like to do is to stir up tribal strife within Ethiopia. So this is what they're attempting to do. They will try to do so using neighboring countries and is also why Egyptian generals recently were in Mogadishu. They're trying to stir up trouble. The broadcast triggered widespread ridicule, particularly among Egypt's vast army of users of social networks. Among Mercy's achievements, the first secret meeting in the world to be aired live read one joke that made the rounds. Egypt has so far not apologized to Ethiopia for the broadcast. El Sharkawis 
main response on Twitter was to say she was sorry members of the meeting did not know they were being broadcast. The most prominent expression of regret came from leading opposition figure Mohammed al Barde, who was invited to the meeting but did not attend. Sincere apologies to the people and governments of Ethiopia and Sudan for irresponsible utterances at the President's National Dialogue, he tweeted. Ethiopia has laid out plans to invest more than $12 billion in harnessing the rivers that run through its rugged highlands to become Africa's leading power exporter. The centerpiece of the plan is the Grand Renaissance Dam being built in the Benishangul Gamuz region bordering Sudan, now 21% complete. It will eventually have a 6,000 megawatt capacity, the government says, equivalent to six nuclear power plants. Cairo argues that Ethiopia has not properly considered the dam's impact on the river, saying that a report put together by experts from Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia is insufficient. So, in conclusion, most of the Somali troops have been trained by member states of the African Union, such as Uganda, Kenya, and Ethiopia, not by Egypt, Iraq, Iran, Qatar, or Saudi Arabia. In fact, some of those states financed Al-Shabaab to avail them with weapons and training in improvised explosive devices which terrorized Mogadishu and other parts of Somalia for many years after the fall of the Union of Islamic Courts. The arrival of these Egyptian generals in Somalia comes at a time when some members of the Egyptian government have threatened to sabotage and blow up a dam that Ethiopia is building on the Blue Nile River in the Asoso region of Ethiopia. Egypt, Iran, nor any of the Arab states mentioned constructively came to the aid of Somalia when radical terrorist members of Al-Shabaab was a festering sore for Somalis, helping give the Zionist Western nations, such as the United States, excuses to bomb and kill within Somalia. Some of these extremists proclaimed their allegiance with Al-Qaeda, which, as I've indicated before, is the face of the CIA. Where was Egypt when their Arabic-speaking brothers in Libya were targeting blacks, including Somalis, in Libya during the fall of and after the fall of the Jamaharia government? The most viable conclusion that can be made about the Egyptian generals' presence in Somalia is to sow the seeds of more tribal hatred with the target being Ethiopia and other African countries, and by extension, the African Union. Their ploy should be rejected by the Somali people. Ethiopia will and should continue to build the dam. Egypt is weak, and if it's foolish enough to stir up terrorists, it will discover itself on the losing end and more destabilization from within Egypt itself. Much like we are seeing with Turkey, Turkey has cited and aided the terrorists who are intent on overthrowing the Syrian government through terroristic means backed by the United States, Britain, and France, as well as Qatar and Saudi Arabia. So now Egypt should beware because it lives in a glass house just like Erdogan of Turkey lives in a glass house. This is T. West with Afro Synergy. Thank you.